He just blows my mind on a daily basis. So many times I'm so grateful for His love and His mercy and His guidance and His strength to get me through so many things in life that I didn't even know that He was working in. So I'm just so grateful and thankful that He loves me so unconditionally and that there's nothing that I can do to ever make Him not love me like He does. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. When we're having a bad week and it seems like everything is going wrong, it's nice to be able to have one constant to look to, something that never changes, is always reliable, and there for us when we need it. This week, two men of faith share how God's love has been that constant in their lives. Grammy award-winning country singer from the group Rascal Flats, Gary Lavox, and pastor, speaker, and evangelist, who was also the personal pastor of Dr. Billy Graham, Dr. Don Wilton. First up, Let's hear from Gary LaVox. I'm Gary LaVox and lead singer of Rascal Flats. I grew up in Westerville, Ohio, just outside of Columbus. And, you know, growing up as a kid, I, I just, I loved to be outside. So hunting and fishing and just being outdoors was a big part of who I was. But I grew up playing soccer and basketball, baseball, so sports was kind of what I did. Ohio State football, that's kind of, you know, you're kind of born with the scarlet and gray onesie, you know, if you're, you're born in the state of Ohio. My grandmother, she would have us at church every Wednesday, twice on Sundays, you know, and uh, but went to a Pentecostal church, so music was a huge part of our life, and everybody played something, sang something. I think I learned a harmony part first before I learned how to sing lead or any of that stuff. So everybody played and sang. And the first song I ever learned word for word all the way through was the old Rugged Cross. My grandpa would play. I would sing. And so I think I was seven. And I worked for the board of DD Development Disabled, you know, and uh, for 10 years in Ohio. And one day I was sitting in my mom's kitchen and I was singing, uh, the Brian White song was on the radio, Someone Else's Star, and I was singing it in the kitchen, and it was the weirdest moment of my life. I was like, oh. I was like, I think I sound like I sound like the guy on the radio, and I was like, it was so weird. It was like the Holy Spirit. I was like, Lord, I think you've given me the gift, a gift to sing, and I and I just I felt so convicted. I was like, I feel I'm so sorry that I have not used it. I just didn't take the shot, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. So I put in a two-week leave of absence, literally sold everything that I had and took the biggest leap of faith in my life, sold everything, threw everything in my truck, and drove straight to Nashville knowing I wasn't going to go back home. And that was the truest test of faith. Faith in my life has really shaped the man that I am today because that's, I've had such a solid foundation in my upbringing, and, and I'm so thankful to my mom and, and my grandmother for laying that spiritual foundation. And, you know, faith is believing in the things that you can't see. That's the definition of faith. And I've always, I've always been good at trusting God, and, and because I know that He was things that just seemed so, it would just stress me completely out when I was just trying to do things I'd see this is the way it's got to go and got to and I, there were so many disappointments where it's like okay you just have to give up or you'd be completely miserable and stressed out all the time so I've always been good at at trusting God not that it's been easy but I've been really good at being a faith warrior because I I really trust and believe that he's got everything laid out his purpose and his plan for me is going to be perfect even though I don't see it Sometimes I, I get so frustrated that I have no other choice but to trust Him. And it's really shaped the way that I am, all the way to me moving to Nashville. You know, Rascal Flats, well, there's no way we could even have dreamt that big of all of the wonderful things the, and the hits and all the things we've been able to do. And a lot of things with us, with Flats has been, we were the first to do it, you know, like we were the first country act to ever play Wrigley Field and sell Madison Square Garden out on all these things. And, you know, we played the World Trade Center. We were there eight days before 9-11. We were the last band to play in between Tower 1 and Tower 2. I mean, there's so many gigantic, huge, you know, Joe Don from Oklahoma and 
Jay and I from, you know, Ohio with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and just, uh, it's, you can't, it's a fairy tale. It really is. I don't even know how to put it into words. It's, it's been the most unbelievable, breathtaking, but I think ordained chapter of my life. There's just no way that I can even put it into words, how grateful and thankful and in the music business, every record that you do, it's the biggest record of your life. And it's like, man, we've had three number ones of the next record. It's the biggest record of your life. So it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress because you just want to keep out doing yourself and pushing the envelope and growing and all of that. And sometimes, you know, to be honest, you, you kind of run out of like, what is next? And so a lot of times for all three of us in Rascal Flats, what we've done is a lot of times just hit our knees and individually and had to go, okay, Lord, we are so lost don't know what to do next but we're just going to ask you to cover us and we know that you've got the perfect purpose and plan for our life so we're just just going to wait on you to reveal it i'd like for you to hurry but i just (laughs) but we're just going to wait on you thank goodness i my spiritual foundation and my walk with christ and my relationship with him is truly what got us through I'm so excited about this new season in life. My new projects, my first solo project, and I've always wanted to do a gospel record, always. We've been going crazy for 20 years with touring and records and everything else. So this pandemic, something that was, you know, so horrific, you know, I I finally, it gave me the time. So I just kind of really just locked in and did this project called One on One, and it's fusing my music with my faith. We've always kind of done that, you know, with, with Broken Road and picking and choosing songs like that. And songs, we, we've always snuck a little Jesus in on a lot of stuff through the years, but I really had the time to do this gospel record, and I did it with some of the most amazing people on the planet, and I just, I'm so thrilled about it. And life was so dark and so crazy and so full of fear of what's next. So I was like, I'm going to try to do something positive out of this thing. I've always sang for the Lord. I always will. But this time, the solo project one-on-one, I get to sing about him. I felt like it. everybody just needed some hope, some encouragement, some, you can get through this. You can push on through. With God, you can go the distance. And that's what we came up with. And that was the very first song that we wrote for the project. You know, I hope when people hear the distance, whenever they're listening to it, that they really know that they're not alone in whatever they're dealing with and that there is hope. And you just call on the name of Jesus and you can get through it. Don't ever give up. Don't give up. Life can feel like that sometimes. Like you just, you you can't do it, but you can do it. You can get through it. If you call upon his name and trust in him, you know, the SFT, see his face, feel his presence, trust his word that you can do it. You can get through it and uh, don't ever give up. I mean, there's so much power in prayer. You know, I've seen it so many times throughout my life, the absolute strength and power that's in prayer. Jesus Listens, January 10th. Dear Jesus, please help me learn to appreciate difficult days, being stimulated by the challenges I encounter rather than becoming distressed. As I journey through rough terrain with you, I gain confidence from knowing that together we can handle anything. This knowledge is based on three blessings. Your presence continually with me, the Bible's precious promises, and my past experiences of coping successfully by depending on you. When I look back on my life, I can see how much you have helped me through difficult days in the past. Yet I easily fall into the trap of thinking, yes, but that was then and this is now. Instead, I need to remember that 
Though my circumstances change immensely, you remain the same throughout time and eternity. Moreover, in you I live and move and have my being. As I love close to you, aware of your loving presence, I can go confidently through my toughest times. In your worthy name I pray. Amen. You know, that passage resonates with me so much because there's so many times through life where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know, because it's truly the only way that you can get through life. There's so many times I look back through my musical career and just my life and being a husband and a dad that I've looked and it just where God has shown up, where I have fallen short, where he's picked it back up. And, you know, God has always been with me at times I didn't even know to help me get through things. I'm like, man, I can't believe, how did I get out of that? Or how did that turn out to be so good? Something so awful was, so I've all, and it's funny because you don't know right there at that time maybe why or how or what or if, but later on you're like, oh. I mean, it kind of goes back to the footprints thing where it's like, Lord, why did you leave me? You know, there was only one set of footprints in the sand. Well, that's when I carried you. I love that. And so many times he's carried me in my life where I just had no idea. I mean, Rascal Flatts, that that kind of stuff doesn't just happen. I mean, we worked hard and all of that, but I don't know if we earned every accolade that we got. I think sometimes God just had that planned for us because we were representing him musically and just being good to people. Our fans are just the greatest. And <laughs> There's so many times in my life I look back and I'm just like, I cannot believe you chose me for this. I did nothing to deserve all of this, just all of these blessings. It's just crazy. But yeah, God gets all the glory and all the honor and all the credit. Gary's new gospel project, One on One, is now available everywhere music is sold. Stay tuned to Dr. Don Wilton's story after a brief message about the new book from Sarah Young that Gary LaVox just read during his interview called Jesus Listens. Many of us want to develop a deeper prayer life. In this new 365-day devotional, Jesus Listens, Sarah Young offers daily prayers based on Scripture that will help you experience how intentional prayer can connect you to God and change your heart. Learn more about Jesus Listens and download a free sample at jesuscalling.com slash Jesus Listens. Our next guest is African native Dr. Don Wilton, senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and founder and president of the Encouraging Word television ministry. Spreading the good news of the gospel has been Dr. Wilton's calling in life since he was only eight years old and he dug deep to find the courage to take the leap into a life of ministry. Moving to the U.S. as a young married man with virtually nothing but the contents of two suitcases, and he saw his dream come to life as his ministry and outreach grew into over 40 years of service. For several of those years, Dr. Wilton served as a friend and pastor to the beloved Dr. Reverend Billy Graham. He shares with us about the special lifelong relationship the two men developed, which he has also written about in his new book, Saturdays with Billy. Hello, everyone. My name is Don Wilton. It's such a joy to be able to share with you for these few moments together. I know you've probably already wondered where in the earth I come from. I was privileged to be born and raised in Africa, actually. I was born in KwaZulu-Natal on the east coast of Southern Africa, grew up in a home with the most wonderful parents who served the Lord. My father was a pastor for years and years. I grew up with the wide open spaces of Africa, a tremendously adventurous life, getting into everything. But you know, I had to reckon with the Lord Jesus Christ very early age, I went to boarding school in the mountains of Zululand. In fact, I was just eight years of age and made a decision to give my life to Christ when I was just but a boy. I used to ride my horse among the Zulu people and play a little gramophone record with messages of the gospel from the Africa Inland Mission and try to speak in the Zulu language. But you know, 
my own heart needed to come into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And I eventually moved back into a day school when I was in high school. And uh, I think spiritually, my life began to go downhill from then. I was never a rotten scoundrel or anything uh, remarkably bad, excepting to say that I began to hang around with wrong company, became wrong company, was a typical teenager, even graduated eventually from high school and went to serve in the military in Africa and was searching for meaning and purpose. So I came into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And my life has never been the same again because the Lord gave to me a fresh purpose and a new meaning. And he changed my life and my perspective forever. And I will forever be grateful to the Lord and the influence of people in my life. Hindsight is wonderful when you take cognizance of the pattern of your life. And now as an adult and as a believer, I look in the rearview mirror and I just see the hand of God in my life. God works all things together for the good of those that love him and to those who are the called according to his purpose. When I came out of the military, my heart was burning. I married this most beautiful young lady, my wife, and uh, she had such an influence in my life, came into this fresh relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I was studying at university. I already had uh, a couple of master's degrees. I was teaching, I was being promoted. And the world was looking awfully good, but something was missing. And on an Easter Sunday with my young bride next to me, I fell upon my knees before the Lord and said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And it was there that I surrendered my life to whatever God wanted me to do. And I had little idea what he had in mind because we lived in Africa and we're very happy there. And concurrent with that was my call to go and prepare for the ministry. Well, it just so happened that an American preacher from the state of Mississippi came on a mission trip to Africa, was told about me, walked up to me and said, young man, you need to come to America to study for the ministry. Well, that got my attention. And so my wife and I, in the matter of three months, resigned everything. We sold everything that we owned. We bought two one-way tickets and we arrived in New York City 45 years ago with two suitcases in our hand and $1,400 in our pockets, not knowing where we were going or what we were going to do or how we were going to get there. And so that began our journey of studying for the ministry. And it's just amazing because we had no idea what God had in store for us. And it's one thing to have had the joy and privilege of writing this book about my long relationship with Dr. Billy Graham, but it's another thing to try and express all the things that are in my heart. I just love Dr. Graham so very much and had the joy of being drawn into his heart and into his life without a doubt, knowing that he has friends all over the world. And I'm just one drop in the bucket. But I did have a very unique relationship with Mr. Graham. And for many, many years, almost 25 years, I had the privilege of sitting at his feet. And most of that time was on Saturdays. And most of that time, it was right there at his home in Montreat, North Carolina, on that beautiful mountain top gazing over the beauty of God's creation. As the two of us entered into a very intimate, personal relationship as pastor and friend and confidant. And it was through that relationship that God blessed me beyond anything that I could possibly imagine. It's a book about a real man who lived in a real world, who had a real deep love for a real most precious, precious wife, who had a real most precious family, who loved playing with his dogs for real, 
and who love barbecue and ribs and hot dogs and yogurt. We would go for walks together. We would eat together. We would sit on the front lawn together and play with the dogs and munch on hot dogs. And we would laugh and we would talk about everything under the noonday sun to describe the impact of Mr. Graham on my life is almost impossible for me to do. Mr. Graham didn't just talk to me about how to live. He showed me up close and personal. I didn't just watch him. I sat with him. I didn't just listen to him. I conversed with him and we became so close. He enabled me to see my own life in a fresh way. He challenged me at the deepest level of my soul spirit. He questioned spiritually the zones of my own leadership, pastoral leadership, the workings of my ministry, the mouthings of my words, the handlings of the word of God, the dealings with the conflicts that we all experience from the lives of people and places and circumstances. This man, Billy Graham, showed me But as he showed me, he loved me at such a deep level that the very love with which he loved me was in and of itself the greatest reflection of God loves you, which he said over and over and over again to peoples and nations of every tongue and of every tribe and of every race and of every culture. Well, I began to sit down and pen my thoughts in chapters all centered around circumstances and events related to the symbolism and the actualities of this incredible place, this retreat, this breathing center, this home base, this place where his soul spirit resided this place where the love of his life lived, this place of his nourishment and his nutrition, this source of his strength for his walk, this place where he prepared, this origination, this fountainhead from whence flowed the rich waters of God's grace that reverberated around the world to the point at which countless numbers of people today know Jesus Christ and are themselves singing in the presence of Christ. This is where it came from. You know, we talk about Dr. Billy Graham. I don't know how many times he talked to me about the incredible partnerships he has and we have together as believers. Well, we're talking about one of those incredible lights that shine across our world. Listening to real life stories of faith as told by those who've experienced the power of living in his presence on the Jesus Calling podcast. What an incredible thing that is. And let me say to you that millions of people have been inspired by the words of this number one best-selling 365-day devotional, Jesus Calling. And lives are being changed and lives are being blessed in so many ways. And so I'm so thankful to the Lord for Sarah Young and for this incredible ministry. And what a joy to be able to read March 21st. Trust me and don't be afraid, for I am your strength and song. Think what it means to have me as your strength. I spoke the universe into existence. My power is absolutely unlimited. 
human weakness consecrated to me is like a magnet drawing my power into your neediness however fear can block the flow of my strength into you instead of trying to fight your fears concentrate on trusting me when you relate to me in confident trust there is no limit to how much i can strengthen you remember that i'm also your song I want to share my joy living in conscious awareness of my presence. Rejoice as we journey together toward heaven. Join me in singing my song. What a powerful verse. You know that's what it's all about. Well, try sitting with Mr. Graham for 25 years and even suggest to him that any conversation should be void of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul put it like this. He said, "I save to know nothing among you excepting Jesus Christ and him crucified." But it was within that context that Dr. Billy Graham showed me, talked to me, loved me, taught me what it means to live the Jesus life This is about a real conversation between two real people It's about real life It really is only about Jesus I have never been around a greater man who was more humble than Dr Billy Graham and i will love him for the rest of my life and i will thank god for him for the rest of my life to learn more about the ministry of dr wilton please visit theencouragingword.com and you can find his new book saturdays with billy wherever books are sold if you'd like to hear more stories about god's relentless love for us check out our interview with lauren akins Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we hear from All Elite Wrestling star Brandi Rhodes, who shares about the first time she realized that she was a groundbreaker for women in the sport of wrestling. You know, I, it didn't really register with me until I announced at um, my first WrestleMania. And that's when a lot of people start throwing stats around because there's so much, you know, news around this and stuff. And I guess that's when people looked into it and said, hey, is she the first one to do this? And the answer was yes. So, um, you know, it's something that's really cool and I'm really proud of. And there are a lot of firsts for me in wrestling. Want to hear more inspirational stories of people who have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then subscribe today to the Jesus Calling Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a review, which helps us reach and inspire others with these stories. Plus, if you like seeing our guests as well as hearing them, you can find video interviews available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Jesus Calling Book on Facebook and on the Jesus Calling Instagram page.